Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Magic the Gathering Wallet Fatigue. So what is Wallet Fatigue? It's when you have a hobby and all this new stuff is coming out and you are excited, but then you, you, know, you want to buy this, you want to buy that, and it's really hard to say for what you actually want because of so many other interesting things coming up. So Wallet Fatigue this is something you experience in every hobby. Uh, there's not any hobby that doesn't want to sell you the newest, hottest item, no, no matter what it is. So how do I deal with wallet fatigue? I just choose what to buy and I choose what not to buy. I don't buy a little bit of this and then a little bit of that. I just go completely without buying a set. Or even in this case, uh, I've missed my first pre-release since RTR. No, that's not right. Since original Ravnica, I've been going to pre-releases. Uh, it's nice because you can go to them anywhere. Uh, you can move from one place to another place and there will always be a local within half an hour drive holding pre-release. One of the best parts about Magic, I feel like, is you can be part of a community anywhere. So if you tend to move a lot, it's fantastic. But uh, Wallet Fatigue is sometimes more extreme than other ones uh, magic for the most part i'm always net neutral uh, mainly thanks to this channel um i don't have that many patreons i don't have that many i don't take sponsors i just point blank refuse sponsorships oh here's a hundred dollars make a video okay no <laughs> um and you know I, every other channel pretty much does sponsors and it's worth their time to do it I'm in a little different scenario. I enjoy making magic videos and I don't need to make money from these, but I make money from views and I make enough that like it covers the cost of the hobby. It, it now covers the cost of the hobby because I have toned it way down from buying a few cases to buying a case to buying not even a box of the new set. If the new set does not look interesting, I am not going to buy it. If I personally don't like it and everyone says it's amazing, I'm not going to buy it. So all these decisions should be based on your personal finances and your personal feeling for the set. The more extreme example would be Fire Emblem Heroes, which you probably saw some videos on and you're like, what? what's going on here? Well, in that game, they come up with a banner like every two weeks and then they make the characters like very limited edition and they use all these other cues to tell you oh spend money spend money right and it's it's a random lottery it's like opening booster packs and not getting what you want so you keep opening booster packs and these booster packs are quite expensive so um how I control myself then is I just say my, to myself, hmm, there's only going to be a few characters I want. I'm only going to pull for those characters. I'm not going to spend any money on any banners that I don't like. And that includes even the banner is really powerful. Every new banner is more exciting than the last banner. Otherwise, how would they sell it? That's how I know Masters 25 has to be very good. Otherwise, how are they going to sell it into rivals from unstable, like, an iconic masters and just in November. It would be insane to me that masters 25 was bad. Um, it, it just would make almost zero sense to me that it would be bad because if it is bad, no one would buy it given what else is out there. You have unstable right ahead of it. You have rivals of Ixlon and you probably have lots of boxes of iconic masters yet to be opened. So when I look at this set, I say to myself, yeah, I'm not going, I'm going to skip standard for a bit. I'm not going to play standard during Ixlon, Ixlon because I'm really excited for core set and I'm really excited for Domania, Domania, Domania. And I, that's the one set I am most excited to do, uh, most excited about, and I hope you know, I really do hope that it is what I expect it is, like a throwback to Odin times of the good old days of Magic the Gathering where it was, you know, the art was good, in my opinion, better than it was today. And we had a storyline similar and it would be interested. I'm just actually interested to see what happened to everybody, right? Like I'm assuming that there will be like throwbacks because then they 
going back to set, there's always some type of throwback to your favorite characters of the set. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for Core Set again, because Core Set is nice. Uh, typically, they will reprint some valuable cards in Core Set, so it's a guarantee that those cards, like Court of Calling, Org Bog, Tomb of Yogmire, uh, Scavenging Ooze, although that's been reprinted to death. Um, that was a good card at the time. It was a $40 regular card. These are known quantities, um, and having known quantities is very important for me. For me, like on stable, where I I know I'm gonna get a land. I know that land eventually will be more, worth more than the pack. To boost the pack, it might take five, ten years, but it'll get there, and I can sit on a bunch of them. I like that. That's what I enjoy most is under knowing for certain that this is a card. So Scarab God is insanely expensive. I'm going to go over him a little bit more in detail. But I don't know his future. I think he's really good in EDH, but I don't know if it's a $42 card. I don't know if the Masterpiece is that insane value, which I'll show you. The Masterpiece is more expensive than Force of Will. Masterpiece. Mm. It's quite interesting. Did not expect to see that coming, but I'm, I mean, does it hold? That's a good question. It's a very good question. So when you are experiencing wallet fatigue, the strategy is don't like... So in Fire Emblem, they have this thing where they give you the first row, which is like, imagine the first booster pack for free, and then they want you to keep buying and buying and buying until you, what, you get what you want. I would say don't buy, buying singles is definitely going to help. Don't buy boxes, don't buy cases unless you really love the set. And if you're not going to buy a box, you're not going to buy a case, then you know just control your spending and figure out what you actually do want. Look at this graph right here and figure out what you do want to buy. Maybe it's unstable because you love the land. And don't spend until you get there. Uh, it's exactly the same as the Fire Emblem. Um, I used to spend $300, 400 $500 and one sitting if I emblem, not one sitting, like one month. Mm, I don't know. I need to go back to look. But I used to spend, you know, buy $80, $80, $80, $80, $80. And then I realized I don't actually want any of these characters. Like I would much rather have the ones, you know, that are coming out later. And I realized that every later character is better than the one that I just paid money for. Anyway, that is it. Uh, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.